It's your boy Wardy, and we're back at it with the latest Mets post game show. This is round two of trying to do it. Had some troubleshooting issues a couple seconds ago. I appreciate everyone's patience, though, to everyone first watching live here on YouTube. To people watching on Twitter, happy to have you all. Please make sure to smash that like and subscribe on as you first come in, as it is the easiest and best way to support the channel. As we will be breaking down together the Metropolitan Series victory today, as they took over, yes, the Cincinnati Reds and Cincy by a final score of three to one. What were the big Biggest takeaways in this one headline by guys like Shamanaya and yes the man that's been in a lot of talks in Mets line lately more negative than positive Francisco Lindor finally decides to break out we'll get into Lindor's production Shamanaya and everything in between as the Mets secure their first series victory of the 2024 regular MLB season I will be answering your questions comments and concerns as always here in the live show for people on replay happy to have you in here too let me know your biggest takeaway from today's win in the series of as a whole in the comments down below and again for people that watch on twitter know that i will only be interacting with the chat here on youtube per usual but i appreciate everyone first chiming in again live and on replay happy to have you all in here but more than anything folks intro rolled awesome happy to hear that folks what i want to see from everybody now well even if it wasn't the prettiest one they got the job done folks let's spam those w's in the live chat you know the drill spam those w's in the live chat people that watch this on replay the same applies to you too love Love to see it. Let me see him spam right now, folks. The Mets are now three and six on the season. Again, less than ideal, obviously, but a much better position than what it could be. Again, just by a couple runs difference. It's frustrating because it feels like this Mets team should be in a better position than what they are right now, but they also have lost in just some of the most embarrassing ways possible, including yesterday's absolute blunder against the Reds. But Ryan Clifford present, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that. Lindor is a beast batting righty. I'm not shocked he uh he busted out today. Hey, there there really needs to be consideration to bat him righty full time. Love you, Tyler. Love you too, Ryan. Thank you so much for the kind words, my friend. I appreciate that. Lindor, again, batting from the right side of the plate. We saw the production it had. It certainly was a positive for him and his production today. And you could tell that against the lefty, too. That was something he has more comfortability with. Lindor fluctuates kind of year by year. Some years he's better batting from the right side of the plate. Some years he's better batting left. There isn't like a true thing to differentiate because it does fluctuate year by year, truly for Lindor. And so far this season, he's been handling lefty pitching better than righty pitching. And that's okay. You know, hopefully we can just get a balance. It's definitely hard, again, for switch hitters to... Too. They usually have a slow roll to begin the year for a lot of cases, for a lot of guys, so I'm not overly shocked by it. But for Lindor, who went 0 for 5 yesterday, who's been absolutely horrendous, for him to have the game he had today was absolutely huge, not only for his confidence, for the fans to hush up a little bit, naturally and rightfully so, and just to see our star shortstop perform at the level that we want him to perform. Yes, he didn't have the prettiest game today, because while he did, of course, have the bomb and the double that we'll get into, he also did leave runners stranded, and we'll get into that as well. And Pete Alonso, same applies. Alonso did not have a good series, all things considered. A lot of guys, again, were underwhelming still, to say the least. And we do have some updates as well on J.D. Martinez and and others I'm about to share with you all. But before I do that, again, continue to smash that like and subscribe button as your first chime in. Really does mean a lot, folks. And as you spam in those W's after a Metropolitan Series win, now let's listen to my great friends at Greg and Jordan with the official Mets postgame jingle here on Wardy and YM. As always, shout out to my good friends Jordan and Greg who do a fantastic job with their Mets jingles for all things Mets all season long as well. Check them out on their socials in case you haven't already. Jordan Simpson has been a longtime follower of mine especially. Feels like yesterday Jordan was flagging me in a freaking parking lot in the 2021 season. I'm um, coming up to me, say what's up, and we've been good friends ever since. So shout out to all of them. They do a fantastic job. And now let's get into this one. Rick James, <laughs> got Rick James to do his intro. <laughs> 
Oh, I love that. I really do. But if, all right, folks, let's talk now. Let's talk about this ball game, all right? Because we saw a lot transpire. And there is one key update, two key updates, actually, I would like to share with you all before we go through any by any, as we always do with Shamanai's brilliance today, aside from the fact that he couldn't go too deep. And the Mets offensively just doing what they need to do at the end of the day, even though that, yes, they had many opportunities to blow this game open beyond what we saw with our very eyes. But as you see, you got everything you need to know there. But there are two key updates to share with you all. Yes, Justin, I get that a lot on the Conforto front. I really do. Shout out to BetUS as always, our amazing sponsor on the channel. We'll do a little parlay or we'll do a little pick with them before we wrap up the show today. I'll let you guys know more. But before I do... Two updates, first of which, Drew Gilbert, Mets top outfield prospect, unfortunately has around a mild hamstring strain, so he is on the uh, minor league IL stint. Hopefully, it's just a normal injured, injured list stint, and he'll be back with the Syracuse Mets before you know it. He unfortunately hurt himself yesterday, tried to stay in the game, and then quickly found out that no, he shouldn't. It's clearly tight, and he was pulled from that one. And J.D. Martinez, folks, is not going to be ready for the Atlanta Braves series, unfortunately. There was initial rumblings and belief that that would be the case. Carlos Mendoza did emphasize that the situation was fluid, and after seeing J.D.M. record a hit that we saw yesterday as well at Port St. Lucie, he's not going to take the next couple days off before he's back in game action and unfortunately this is a reality of signing a 36 year old who openly said himself he needs a proper ramp up knowing he didn't have spring training this is a guy that has dealt with back issues that we've seen in the past in the 2022 season with the uh, Red Sox as well something he's always going to manage for the most part so you're not going to rush JD Martinez and quite frankly he knows a little bit of an older guy so he's a little sore like I, I know that might seem a little fight but it's true so for a guy in his position even as a DH he still needs to get more game ready, more game shape, and be able to handle, again, MLB caliber pitching, which we know he'll be able to do just fine. So the soonest that J.D. Martinez will be in this Mets lineup is a week from now. We're looking at next weekend against the Kansas City Royals is really the earliest we're looking at at this current rate. And again, it's still a fluent situation, folks. So as much as I would have loved to see J.D. Martinez in the Mets lineup against the Atlanta Braves, that is not going to happen now. Julio Tehran will be taking the bump for game to one tomorrow. That will break down in our pregame show. It's going to be a whirlwind of a four-game series. My bar is fairly low. I'm just hoping for the best. I really am. But those are the latest updates for those that are unaware of what's happening with Drew Gilbert, Mets top outfield prospect, and J.D. Martinez, who, yes, will be with the Mets, just not yet. We're still at least a week away from having the veteran slugger in this Mets lineup. And once he is here, I'm damn excited to see what he can do, but we're not there yet. So just the latest updates on that front. Couch Potato, he wasn't, though. That's the thing. Like, there are even people saying that, oh, he didn't work this offseason. He did. He was training with Driveline to do a fantastic job with their newfound information on getting the best out of both batters and pitchers, of course. So he was working on his game plenty this offseason, but you cannot replicate properly everyday situations being in the game, facing pitching, facing MLB caliber pitching, or just professional pitching in itself. So yes, JD did his due diligence and did his normal offseason work, but now having the proper ramp up with a club in spring training definitely sets you back by at least, you know, north of a month. So JD Martinez, again, the season started on right around, what was it, March 30th or so. He'll be with the Mets potentially as early as a week from now. We'll soon see what happens on that front. But excited to see him in the lineup when it does transpire. Thank you for the kind words on Mets Facts. Really appreciate that too. But now let's break down the ball game. Finally, let's get into this one, okay? Sean Manaya on the bump today against Southpaw Ashcraft. Lefty on lefty action. And one lefty was much better than the other, which I'm very happy to say. And that was in the Mets' favor as Sean Manaya does more Sean Manaya things, folks. And we'll get into the offensive production and all that stuff. But I actually want want to jump here briefly to just show you Shamanaya today five innings of three hit one earned run ball two walks six strikeouts a 0.82 ERA and how he was able to do exactly that was with the following Shamanaya that we saw there in the first gave up a hit to Christian and Carnacion Strand that's all she wrote though and the second he had a one two three inning including two strikeouts the fastball up looked great today the sweeper had a 50% whiff rate and the cutter looked solid too love what I saw from Shamanaya today and had him Himself in some jams again he had two walks but was able to work out of them and grind it out against some key at bats love what I saw from Sean his ability to be aggressive the way he was with hitters today and the third Thompson with a bubble uh, Thompson with a single India with a hit by pitch and then back-to-back -back strikeouts thankfully by Manaya ends it there in the fourth Candelario with a walk 
Fairchild with a single, Cruz with a hit by pitch, Espinoza with an RBI sack fly, and thankfully Mania is able to get out of that jam with a huge play and with a huge double play turn, actually, if I'm not mistaken, in the fourth that was started by Brett the effing Matt Beatty. Love Brett, love what he's doing right now. And then in the fifth, Shamanai with his final inning of the day. One, two, three. Love to see it. I know we want to see length out of these starters. Daniel, Dave, great members as always. Max, how you doing? Everybody first chiming in live on a replay. Happy to have you on here as we're breaking down the Metropolitan victory against the Reds by a final score of three to one. Their first series victory of the 2024 calendar season. Exciting stuff. Finally, we have some optimism here in Metzland a little bit, even though it still wasn't overly pretty. Manaya, though, even though, yes, he wasn't able to go past five today, let's not forget Kodai Singa will hopefully be back in this Mets rotation over the next month or so. And the Mets, once we find out, you know, the status of Tyler McGill, Jose Buto can be called up as soon as April 12th. The Mets are going to stretch to a six-man rotation sooner rather than later. They haven't yet because we've been down arms injury-wise. But once we kind of get those arms back, once we're able to make proper call-ups because there is a transaction line around April 12th to bring up certain guys on the roster, once that happens, we're going to see a six-man. You're going to see guys being able to be stretched out a little bit more because of that reason. So be on the lookout. How the Mets rotation is currently constructed is not how it's going to be for too much longer. And you have to give credit where credit's due. Everyone's been doing their job for the most part. It's just been the lack of ability to go deep into games, which is what has strung this bullpen so thin early on the season. And the Mets don't have, you know, an endless amount of innings eaters currently in their pen. They have a lot in the organization, but not a lot that they can immediately tag and use game by game, which is why we had hiccups with guys like Johan Ramirez yesterday. We saw Michael Tonkin already being DFA'd, etc. These are guys that are supposed to eat innings for us, and if they can't, then it's on to the next mentality, as David Stearns would famously say himself. But on the call, my fault, no one else's. My apologies, folks. All on me. Same thing with the jingle, if that was running for a solid second or two. Why is the jingle running? If the jingle's running, that's all on me. My apologies, everybody. I don't know if the jingle just ran or not again. If it did, that's my bad. I, I always I always forget to switch them when I'm going from one slide to the next. But now let's get into the offensive end of things for the Mets today. Because, again, the offense wasn't too much, but they were able to get the job done. And it starts there. Oh, God, what was that? I apologize. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean for that to happen, everybody. In the first, though, Francisco Lindor with the double. Francisco Alvarez drives him in right away. Thankfully, with a single, but it wasn't necessarily as much because of Alvarez as it was an error there by the Reds defense having their bad fundies doing their best Mets impression just from not even a full 24 hours ago. And now the Mets have an early 1 0 lead. Francisco Lindor's first extra base hit of the season would not be his last that we would see through the first inning. In the second, Stanley Marte with a walk. Then we would see Taylor with a bunt single, his first bunt single laid down of his professional MLB career. Jeff McNeil with a bunt single after as well. Mets have bases loaded just like that in the second. They're only able to score one run, however, and it's in the most Metsian way possible. A hit by pitch to the back of Brandon Nemo drives in the Mets' second run of the game, and then Francisco Lindor unfortunately has the worst double play ball imaginable. That ends the inning. Mets lead bases stranded there, bases loaded rather stranded, and even though Lindor again had early production, man would have been awesome to see him step up in that spot and really blow the doors open before the game really even felt like it began. As we then get to the third, Francisco Alvarez would have walk. Brett Beatty continues to look like the stud that he is. He gets on base with a single. He's batting just under 300 with a 740 OPS so far throughout the first eight or nine games of the season. Starling Marte with a single, then Marte got on base again three times today. Loving that from star studded Starling. Hopefully we see more of that continue in throughout the remainder of the month here in April. Mets will then leave, unfortunately, the bases loaded again. So for back-to-back -back innings, Mets have bases loaded, and aside from Brandon Nimmo being drilled in the back, they do nothing with it whatsoever. Very frustrating. I understand this is Mets baseball at times. I know that they have been slumping still plenty to begin the year on the offensive front. I also know that they have some major flaws in their offensive approach as a whole, which is why a guy like J.D. Martinez were so desperate to see in this lineup on just the type of production that he can 
provide? How good can it be, right? It's a great question to be had. But regardless, we see there the Mets are not able to convert. They still have themselves a 2-0 lead as we then advance to the fourth inning. Francisco Lindor decides to give the Mets some insurance with a no-doubt home run to left. It's his first home run of the year, folks, and that is why out of all the schmucks yesterday going after Lindor, and when I mean schmucks, I really don't mean it because, again, criticism is justified when you go 0 for 5 and you're not heading the way that Lindor was. He was on a, on a 0 for 24 skid entering today's game. Thankfully broke that up and then some, but because of Lindor's struggles and because of his production today sticking out more than anyone else, Francisco Lindor is my star of the night, even though that's still daytime technically at the time of doing the live show. But if you're watching on replay or if you're watching a different time zone, maybe it is maybe it is night, so it's okay. Francisco Lindor is my star of the game, folks. Again, went two for four today, two for five rather, two runs scored, had himself a double, first extra base hit that became a run scored. Early leads, love early leads for this Mets team and the home run to give the Mets at that point then a three run lead, or it was at least three one. It was three it would be three nothing but it would only last half an inning as the reds would score their first and only run in the bottom of the fourth everybody but i gotta ask you you know truthfully out of everyone that played in the mets roster today we'll show you the offensive numbers here shortly but still do you feel that francisco Lindor is deserving to be the star of the night aside from shamanaya it's really hard for me not to pick Lindor here. You know, with all the pressure that's been on him lately, with everything that's been going on, with how people have been acting off the field with him, unfortunately, and just, you know, his lack of production as a whole, no one needed a breakout game more than Francisco Lindor did today for this Mets team. This Mets team is so much better when they have Frankie playing right, and when he's not playing right, we got ourselves a big issue. Careful with the game audio. I don't want Wardy to get copyright 100%. Yeah, I think we're good. I am not playing the game audio here in the live chat, everybody. Let me know but I'm pretty sure nothing went through. So that's a good thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Why would anyone throw in Lindor and his family? There are some sick people in this world, unfortunately, Justin. That's the reality of it. And those sick people claim to call themselves Mets fans at the same time. They're what we call below pond scum and deserve the worst of the worst. Those specific people. Mr. Chicken, how you doing? Should Jorge Lopez be the sub man? He's one of many. He's one of many, so there's that. The Mets don't have a set setup man right now because they don't need a set setup man. And I think that's the better way to go about their bullpen approach all year versus being reliant that like Adovino needs to be your guy every time when he certainly doesn't. Adovino was fantastic today that I'll get into here shortly, but doesn't change the fact that when you look at the Mets' current bullpen configuration, they have multiple guys that can come in in the eighth inning for you. Let's see. Lindor had the best production of any shortstop last year, especially in the NL. So there's that 100%. I um, can't wait to see Acuna playing second base and McNeil. McNeil won't be DFA'd. That won't happen. Um, but Acuna, I also don't necessarily foresee at second base this year. I uh, could be wrong. I mean, we'll we'll find out what happens on that front. I would love to see him get a taste of the bigs at some point this season. Um, let's see. Even when they lose, at least we have someone to talk about and rant 100%, Justin. That's what I'm here for, my man. Uh, let's see. Why do you think, what do you think of the possible Lindor standing no? I think it's a great idea, one, and I think it shouldn't be held for just Lindor. I think Pete Alonso needs it. I think many guys in this Mets lineup need it, if I'm being quite frank. And again, you have nothing to lose. Pete Alonso, especially, Pete had a brutal series, didn't hit a lick. He's now down to 184 on the average, 567 OPS, and all that changed after he hit that home run to tie the game against the Tigers and for the Mets to walk it off thanks to Tyron Taylor. Since then, Pete Alonso has literally done nothing on the offensive end, and we definitely would like to see him step up. What's going to be a massive four-game set now against the Atlanta Braves, where I will have you covered with pre- and post-game coverage every single game of that series. And if my editor is able to get it done in time, we might have a watch party in place for the series too so be on the lookout for that from but yes francisco Lindor is my star of the night but now we advance further in the ball game folks because as you see on the offensive end at, at least look at the heading stats yourself folks as we go further in this one we get then to the fifth we see there the Mets don't do anything offensively in the sixth. Tyron Taylor with a double. Love to see that. Tyron Taylor got on base a couple times today. Had himself a double. No RBIs, but went true for four. Then we would see in the sixth, Jorge Lopez comes in. Jorge Lopez with two outs. Cruz with a walk and a stolen base. Ellie De La Cruz does what Ellie De La Cruz bets. He gets the second. 
even with a perfect Alvy throw, and gets to third with ease. Thankfully, the Reds don't score there. Lopez gets out of that jam unscathed. Brooks Raley, again, walks a couple guys, but gets out of it unscathed in the seventh. In the eighth, Stolly Marte with a single. Mets weren't able to score there. Adam Modavino comes in with a beautiful 1-2-3 inning, including two strikeouts. Sweeper fastball combo looked great there. And then we saw in the ninth, Edwin Sugar Diaz doing what he does best, and that is shutting the door. Edwin with two strikeouts, a much more comfortable look save than what he had in the first game of the series and he now has the bragging rights right now between himself and his younger brother Alexis and who's going to get more wins against each other who's going to get more saves Mets were able to get two from Edwin in this series and you absolutely love to see that so pitching wise as a whole today everybody I think it's so fantastic that we were able to get Lopez Rayleigh Adovino Diaz all with productive adding I mean this is again I don't love us having to use as many relievers as we've been using on the day day by day because of our starters not going deep. But you have to give so much credit where credit's due right now. The Mets still currently have the best year array in all the National League. Rotation year array is first. Bullpen year array entering today's game was fifth. I'd have to imagine it's at least third now, if not second, after having four different relievers go scoreless innings today. Lots to like on the pitching front. And yes, this is not overly sustainable. Yes, I firmly believe and expect the Mets pitching to get their absolute tits lit in at minimum two of the four games against the Atlanta Braves. I think we're going to see some numbers get really inflated, unfortunately, because you're playing such a great offense. And I also know that that's okay. Like, I'm not happy about it, but I understand that this is kind of a a, a foregone conclusion, if you will, because we know how good this Atlanta Braves team is, which is why if the Mets can literally win just one out of the four I'll take that as a moral victory. The Mets can split the series. I will be ecstatic because when you look on the team on paper, yes, the Mets have talent, but we know how good this Atlanta Braves team is. They just swept their their opponent. They, they've been playing the past couple days in uh, the Diamondbacks, which is ridiculous considering the Diamondbacks were up 6-0 on the di- on uh on Max Freed and the Braves through the first inning yesterday. I had Diamondbacks run line. Shame on me for that. Braves still ended up winning. Kalanick had himself a three-hit night yesterday. A lot to love there in Braves land, even with Spencer Strider being down with injury. Um, Let's see here. Justin says, Wardy, do you think there's a chance Alonzo's gone after this year? Yeah, I do. I do. I absolutely think there's a chance for sure. Um, And a lot goes into that, though. A lot goes into that. I think Alonzo is still here to stay. But yes, the possibility of him leaving is very much a possibility. It is not something where we can look back even say half a year ago and say, oh, not a chance that hell happens. No, there's definitely a possibility where by the time we get to 2025 season, Pete Alonso is in a different uniform. But the Mets are going to do everything they can to retain him. And I know he wants to stay here. And we'll see how the year goes too. You know, how he performs this year, how he looks in clutch situations as well, needing him to step up. I will say, since... 2020, if I'm not mistaken, Pete Alonso has actually been one of the best players in Major League Baseball in high leverage situations, believe it or not. In clutch situations with pressure, he's been much better than you would actually think. It's a bit surprising, really, because of just how anemic this Mets offense has been at times, but Alonzo's numbers are actually quite impressive on, on that front in certain aspects. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to one to evaluate for sure. All the Lindor haters are quiet. That's true. That is true. My my show has been flooded the past couple days with everybody screaming and kicking and crying that Francisco Lindor should be traded, that he's the worst player imaginable, right? That he isn't worth a cent of his contract. Where is it? Where is this? Where Where is it? If you're one of those people, and that, that's fine if you are, come out of the woodwork. You know, be the meme from Homer in, in The Simpsons, but instead of hiding in the bush, come out of the bush. Where are you? You know, I'm looking for you guys. Uh, But seriously, I understand the criticisms will endure. I said this a lot yesterday, and I will say it again. They are 1,000% justified. He has had a lackadaisical at-bat sometimes so far this season. I hate first pitch swinging by him, especially with guys on base. He has gotten some really bad luck. His bad bit for a reason. Literally so many balls. He's ripped. Yesterday, a 104.5, absolutely ripped, but it's dead center. So, of course, it isn't in the gap. 98.6 on one with, like, an expected batting average of at least 680. Like, there's been a lot of instances already this season where Lindor has had bad luck where he made perfect contact just right in the glove of an outfielder or whatever it may be. Lindor was able to find the gap today and was able to find the seats, something he hasn't done so far this season, and that's what we know him at his best offensively. Francisco Lindor last season with his 30 home run, 30 stolen bag, 100 plus RBI season, he was at his best because he was such a slugging shortstop. Gap to gap with the doubles, 
home runs. If he wasn't hitting those, he wasn't hitting anything, it felt like. And we might find ourselves more in that category again this year with the rate we're currently at. Again, he only has a couple hits this season, and more than a couple are extra base hits now, right? Or at least cut, or at least half. I don't know how many hits Lindor has this season. I feel like it's literally only like four or five. But regardless, Lindor with the double, with the home run today, we will gladly take that for sure. Since Lindor hits better from the right side, here's the thing, Bobby G. It doesn't. It's not like that every single season. That's the thing. Lindor is not a player where if you if you go and take the time to look at his splits year by year, Francisco Lindor has actually fluctuated with where he's been better right or left side. There, it's not one of those things where it's, he's like permanently better on the right side. That's not true. He's not going to go full time like that. It isn't going to happen. Francisco Lindor is never going to go full time with one side unless he has complete yips, which is then what would warrant it. He practices so much, both from the right and the left side of the plate, every single day. And this is also in part, everybody, for those that are maybe wondering, why does Lindor get off to slow starts at times? Being a switch hitter goes directly in hand with that. You know, especially even with the consistent reps you're taking, trying to get acclimated and adjusted and comfortable from both the left and the right side of the plate in any game situation is not an easy thing to do. Even for a guy who literally takes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps so consistently the way that he does that you don't see that's happening pregame, that's happening when he's doing his workouts in the offseason, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, Lindor I don't foresee being in a full-time batting from the right side anytime soon. No, they're going to have him bounce out as he always does. Um, Let's see. Um, Let's see. No one hates Lindor. That's a lie, Joel. Love you to death, Joel, but that's that's not true. There are people that literally hate Lindor. I've interacted with many of them. They have hated him since he has been acquired here. Even before he was extended here, they hated the trade from the beginning, and they still think that the Mets shouldn't have made it. That is not me lying. I've had more interactions than you could possibly believe. But again, as someone who's the host of this platform with just under 25,000 subscribers, continue to smash that like and subscribe on folks. Really does mean a lot as we come at you with post-game, pre-game coverage on a daily basis. Your one-stop shop for all your Mets needs here on YouTube, not directly affiliated with the Mets or SNY. But having said all that, I can tell you, From the hundreds of comments I get on a daily basis, you would not believe the amount of Lindor hate that is actually there. Of people who genuinely do not like him as a player and some who don't even like him as a person. I'm not shilling with him. Miss me with the BS. That's not happening. I've called him out. I've said it every single time. If you're playing like shit, I'm going to call you out. He played like shit yesterday. He has not performed well at all so far this season. Defensively he has. Offensively he's had bad luck and also has had some really lackadaisical at bats. I've called it out every single day if you guys just follow on and watch but this isn't if this is your first time then you don't know me as well and that's okay this is a little introduction my name's Wardy how are you I'm a big Francisco Lindor fan I'm a fan of a player that's been the best shortstop in the NL over the past calendar year I'm a fan of a guy that's been a multi-time six war player for the Mets and for those that think that war doesn't matter I'm sorry to break it to you but a player single-handedly being a factor into six wins for a team from shortstop is unbelievably impressive and very good and needs to be acknowledged because that is an important statistic far more important in my opinion than just looking at say a 250 buying average where that barely tells the whole story what's the expected buying average you know those kind of things is what i care about personally as a fan um we hate a rod and gallo i know i know yanks fans some of them hate a rod some of them love them depends on who you're talking to regardless though let's get back into this one folks because before we advance further in the show before i break down more on what i like from this matchup again the key takeaways again shaman i going five innings of 6k one on a run ball Lindor breaking out the way that he did. Tyron Taylor with a nice multi-hit day too. Brett Beatty with a strong defense and single. Great bullpen work as a whole, everybody. And now I got to tell you briefly about my amazing friends and sponsor, as always, with our great friends here at BetUS. Because BetUS right now, folks, they have a tremendous offer going that I cannot wait to share with you all. Just give me one second as I get everything pulled up. There we go. Let's shift this over right now. As may you know, BetUS has been an amazing partner here on the channel that we have been doing for a while now. And of course, there's the uh, there's the, literally the import ad read. So it, truthfully, it doesn't even matter. This is a verbal, but the verbal again, folks, is that we are giving away hundred and twenty five dollars, and all you need to do in order to get a free twenty five bucks because we're going to disperse it to five people is to email me by clicking the link that I have in the description of this live show and sending me a physical image, a screenshot 
of your BetUS account with your BetUS account number. Don't need all your personal information or anything like that. Just your BetUS account number so I know you have an account. And the first five people to email me their BetUS account numbers showing that they truly do have a BetUS account, signing up with my link down below. That way you two get 125% bonus for your first three deposits. I will give you free $25 to work with to the first five people that have done that. We have done the promo just for a couple of days now. No one has emailed me yet regarding this. And literally all you have to do, because I know we have people using BetUS, is quite literally just email me again, a nice little screenshot of your BetUS account confirming that you have one. And I will get you hooked up in the coming days with free $25 to work with. It is that easy. It is that simple. And right now we got one game in particular tonight, folks, that I like. And we're going to be doing our pregame parlays tomorrow on the channel folks but right now we got the Houston Astros versus the Texas Rangers tonight the Houston Astros are off to a two and seven start but my goodness even at minus 200 I love them on their run line tonight why exactly is that well they got the youngster and Blanco who actually is more of a grizzle vase in his late 20s now coming off of his no no bid the last time he was on the bump for the Astros I love this against Dunning there of the Texas Rangers the Astros have had a very underwhelming start to the year but one of the few bright spots has been been their rookie Blanco who came out with a no hitter in his first start of the season. I'm going to take the Astros run line at minus 200 today and I'm going to go 50 here to win 25. Nothing crazy again just a little sprinkle here and this is going to be a tight matchup for sure but with the way that Blanco has been looking not only spring training where he didn't give up anything whatsoever with the no-no to kick off the season I think that trend is going to continue continue hopefully in the right direction for him and that is the pick that I'm going with today. So if you guys tail good luck to you all and and everybody that gets in on your sports betting action, just make sure you do responsible, of course. Never implore anyone to get involved if they're not comfortable or really not familiar with what they're getting themselves involved with. Again, money line means you're just picking a team outright to win. So I picked run line. What that means is the Astros either need to just win or they need to make sure that they don't lose by more than a certain amount of runs or that it's at least by a certain amount of runs. So that's the case here with the Astros at plus one and a half run line, minus 200. And good luck again to everybody who does their fellow sports betting betting with bet us i do see a comment that i do want to address here so bear with me a second everybody continue smash those buns really does mean a lot and again i really do hope that we're going to be able to squeak in a watch party for this brave series so be on the lookout for that one we will be coming at you with pre and post each of those four games for sure brought to you by bankruptcy and home foreclosure yes of course if you are that bad with betting if you cannot handle it that is true I do not recommend, again, anyone to get involved if you do not know what you're doing or if you don't have self-control. If you don't have those things, make sure you call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's just, again, common sense, but people need to hear it because sometimes people get too high-headed. You say hit on a big parlay that you know you shouldn't have hit. You somehow hit on a 10-leg when you should never do 10 legs, in my opinion, and then, bam, you go on to lose your next ensuing four or five bets and you lose all your money. Not ideal. Don't recommend it. Be smart with your decisions, folks. That's all I got for you on that front. Lindor should not be hanging second in the lineup. Um, that that really doesn't matter to me. If, if Lindor gets moved down, Lindor gets moved down, right? But I'll say this. I think we should take a step back from nitpicking Lindor's usage in the lineup when he actually had his best offensive day of the season today. I agree in the sense that, yes, that double play with the bases loaded was very frustrating. I hear you there. But don't be surprised if Lindor stays in his spot for the majority of the year or has moved up to lead off in the instances where Nimmo does not play, per se, like we saw a couple days ago. Again, regardless of if you agree or disagree, I'm just letting you guys know in advance. Let's see here. Everyone was crying about the Mets rotation, and now what they have the best rotation in the National League. It's very early in the season, but yes. But yes, for sure. Um, let's see here. Got to go. Have a great one, Mets Facts. Thank you so much for chiming in. Really does mean a lot. Happy to have you in here. Um, let's see. You don't know me. I'm not. All right, guys, let's relax. Again, regardless on if you're for or against, and um, and K and K U a K H U N D T. I'm going to pronounce your name wrong. That's why I'm spelling it out. I'd appreciate again if you're if you're not interested that's fine but 
no need to make such ridiculous comments because it's not like I'm the one out here that would be doing such a thing to be going the lengths of, okay, yes, brought to you by bankruptcy and home foreclosure. Like, miss me with that bullshit. All you need to do is literally just be competent with the decisions that you make. And that goes for anything, not just sports betting. That goes for drinking for A121 and up. It goes for smoking. That goes for literally anything in which you either get some type of pleasure from entertainment or whatever it may be. You are in control of your actions. And if you feel you do not have control of your actions, either call 1-800-GAM or do not get involved in sports betting. Do not get involved with BetUS. It is that simple, yet I have to thoroughly break these things down because we get the smart comments that we do, uh, even though they fully understand why we have things running the way that we do. I digress, though. Let me get into one thing that I did want to highlight today from today's show. Uh, not today's show, today's game, rather. And that was just Sham and I here for a second. I told you guys about the whiff rate today, but to do a little bit more of a pitching breakdown here through Baseball Savant, he was touching with the four-seam fastball, topping out on 96 today with the gun minimum was 91 average was 93 sweeper topping out on 80 minimum 76 sat 78 and a half which is solid cutter topping out on 93 minimum 88 average was 90 love to see that slider 89 minimum 86 and the average was 87 two and then the change up as well 87 topping out minimum was 85 and the average was 86 and a half uh let's see here uh, what do you think will get in? Who do you think will get in, injured from the? Oh, hopefully, no one. Like, I'm not going to answer that question because I don't want anyone to get injured. Never want anyone to get injured. No, miss me with that. Come on down south. We'll leave the lights on for you, Braves Nation. No, I don't. I'm, no, I don't want to go down south. I don't want to be around Braves fans. Respectfully, I know we got a lot of Braves fan followers that'll be watching the channel over the next really throughout the week. They're going to see me lose my shit when the Mets inevitably lose three or four. Again, prove me wrong, Mets. Please prove me wrong. You guys know how much of an optimist I am. So for me to be talking the way that I am tells you how I'm currently viewing the uh, viewing the team justifiably so with the way that they perform through their first nine games of the season. But no, I'm going to sit in the comfort of my own home with these games, but everyone that attends the Hotlanta series between the Mets and the Braves, I wish you luck. That is what I will give you. Adovino again, looked fantastic today. He has looked pretty good the last two outings for sure. And I will say this, everybody, Adam Adovino, while I do not like him in setup position more often than not, because after what we saw last year, especially you can overwork him. If you're strategic about his usage, Adovino can still be a very productive reliever for you. But today, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous. Even even in a two-run ball game where you know there's still a little bit of a lead, but it also could be blown away in just a walk and a blast just like that. Adovino commanded the zone greatly today. He deserves a lot of credit. Edwin was very sharp too. Really wasn't sharp, but, it was, but was able to get out of his own mess, which I like. And Jorge Lopez, same applied after his guys' couple, uh, first couple outs. Um, let's see. Which prospects have a chance to play in the MLB this year? Plenty. Headline by Christian Scott, Mike Vassell. You're going to likely see Drew Gilbert at some point as long as he doesn't have significant injuries like he has, uh, you know, the mild hamstring strain at the moment. You might see some relievers, too, that I haven't heard about in the minors either. I mean, Nate Lavender is a guy that you have to wonder, when is he going to be back in this Mets pen after the great spring that he had, for example? Um, and then you look at, you know, Jet Williams, Luis on Cunha. Could one of those be called up before the season's end? I think it's possible, uh, but it's not something that I think is as much of a lock as a Christian Scott, Mike Vassell, those pitchers especially, and then Drew Gilbert on the offensive end. You know, so those are guys I would definitely look out for for sure. But we'll soon we'll find out. I, I just don't I don't anticipate any significant prospect call ups for at least the first couple months of the season. Not until earliest June or July do I foresee us having that situation happen. But again, if injuries inevitably happen or what have you, that of course can prompt the Mets to make a more either rash decision or maybe a slight, you know warranted decision to call a guy up a little bit earlier than expected as long as it doesn't feel like they're being properly rushed because you do not want to rush these young talents especially on the pitching end where you could hurt their confidence early how did Bader get over 10 million <laughs> let's see uh love to see Gilbert up there 100 100 percent I agree bad start but a hot streak away from right back at it look at the Red Sox playing a lot better than on paper I think gonna yeah Red Sox are off to a nice start so far this year unfortunately they lost yesterday which I like them as well in their matchup I knew it would be a tight game with a Detmers on the bump with the for the Angels and it was um the Angels ended up winning that one but yeah the Red Sox headline by guys like Tyler O'Neill who's been hitting bombs left and right to begin the year with his new club have a great Trevor story though 
brutal injury, brutal, brutal injury, and I don't wish on anyone. So I hope that he's going to return sometime this season. I do not know the status on that front. Also, what's up, Roy? What's up, Aaron? How you doing? Um, let's see. Gr uh, great win. I'd take a split in Atlanta. I would gladly take a split in Atlanta, too. I'm with you on that one. Um, where do you think JD hits in the lineup? JD will bounce between fourth and fifth, likely most, if not all, of the season. Uh, the only way I see him batting lower in the order to begin things is if, again, the Mets are trying to play it smart with him and don't want him in those high pressure situations from the jump. But he's a Grizzle vet, World Series champ. He knows what it takes to win. He's been there, done that. He's going to be batting cleanup or batting fifth every single day, and that's how it should be, for sure. The, uh, they won a series. Wow, Lindor, okay. Not good hearing about the threats to Lindor and his wife. Come on, man. 100%, Alex. 100%. It's, ridi it's, a, it's ridiculous that we're even having this conversation, and yet we are. But, folks, we are going to wrap up the show in just the next five minutes or so. So if you have any key questions you'd like to share with me, comments or concerns, by all means, relay it in the chat right now. People watching a replay, continue to let me know your biggest takeaways from today's 3-1 victory in the comments down below. And the Mets now 3-6 and six on the season as they secure their first series victory of the 2024 year. Um, thank you so much, Jared. I appreciate that. Really does mean a lot. Congrats on your Yanks today, too. I don't know the score, but I saw Giancarlo Stan hit the Grand Slam. I'm going to assume that you guys either won or are winning that ball game. I'm pretty sure you won, right? Let's see. I'm curious. Where is the status of that Blue Jays-Yanks game right now? I know that Angel Hernandez was with some terrible calls. That man needs to retire last week, but we all know that. Yep, Yanks won 8-3 to today. They're off to a hot start, 8-2. and two. Big, big start for the, uh, for the Bronx Bombers, as much as I hate to say it. Tehran is going to choke. I wouldn't be shocked if he chokes tomorrow. But again, it's Julio Tehran, who has who has yet to start at the major league level this year, facing off against his former team, who, who has a playbook on him. Like, yeah, I truthfully, I will be surprised if Julio Tehran gives the Mets like four scoreless tomorrow. Not a chance in hell I see that happening. So anything better, and I'll be happy. I really will be. Um, how many runs will the Braves score in four games? Over under sixty. That's funny. Uh, it'll definitely be under. I, I want. I I'd like to say it would be under, <laughs> but again, I we'll find out for sure. Um, uh, where you deliver my Mets content for the most part, I appreciate that, Danny. It really does mean a lot, especially to have me paired with the legend himself and Howie. We love him. Let's support Julio 100. percent Oh, I'm gonna be rooting hard for Julio tomorrow. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, we're rational Mets fans, right? We know who Julio Tehran is. We know who the Braves are. You know, again. I think what the Mets do have right now is early season on their side, right? So maybe the Mets can take advantage of a Braves team that is still early on in the goings and getting themselves situated. They just swept, though, the D-backs, so I can't even really say that. It's tough. It's tough. I will say this. If there's one thing that makes these Braves-Mets games a little bit better knowing that the Mets have the expectations that they do this year is knowing that I don't need to necessarily have in my head like, oh, how dare the Mets not beat the Braves, right? Like in 2022, like to see everything unravel the way it did, okay. 2023 stunned a lot too because you were hoping for them to finally get over that hump and they just never did. 2024 now, our expectations are just to make playoffs. We know the Braves are one of, if not the best team in Major League Baseball. So our expectations are low and – I think that might hold. I hope. I hope this helps the Mets and their players' psyches too by going into this series, maybe with not the same added pressure that they've had in the past couple of years when playing Atlanta, especially in Atlanta, right? So this is a loose, hopefully fun Mets team. I would. I would like to see them not press too much, just play loose, fun, comfortable baseball, and that is where I think we're going to see some entertaining things happen. Um, what expectations were? You? Expectations are just push for playoffs, right? Push for playoffs. And I think the Mets will either make it or just miss it. I think that's what will happen. We will win tomorrow. There's a solar eclipse. There you go. Tim Welsh. He's feeling confident in his Mets. Not stressing it. Let's see what we got. Found money. Okay. Let's see. When they loaded the bases twice in two straight innings, they got two runs. I was like, uh-oh. Oh, 100%. I was like, here we go. How are the Mets going to lose this today? Because we saw exactly how they lost the, the day prior in the most mets in way fashion in the eighth. And now you're telling me the Mets have back-to-back -back innings today with bases loaded and do nothing with it besides a Brandon Nimmo RBI because of a hit-by-pitch? Yeah, I was expecting them to lose after seeing that. But they didn't. 
The pitching held up. They just need to do what they need to do in order to win today. That's fine by me at the end of the day. I know it's not the best production by any stretch, but they did what they need to do. And now we move forward into a heated and far and away the biggest series that the Mets have so far this season. Lindor has got to put up his big boy pants and behave like a leader. Who's going to demand accountability from this team? I will say this, Jay. Lindor does one thing great. If there's, if you're going to be like, if you're not a Lindor fan, there's one thing that you can't deny with Lindor. He always holds himself accountable. He always does. There's no one that honestly beats themselves up more that we see at least in the public eye than Francisco when things are not going right for him. He's made it abundantly clear he always needs to be better when he's not doing well. And he does put in that work. It's not like he doesn't. He's always trying to fine-tune his game and make himself better than what he was the day prior. And that's why he's not only being paid the big bucks, but that's why Lindor is one of the best shortstops in the game today. So many factors that go into it. But with that being said, folks, that is going to do it for the show. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Um, they, uh, they're one bar short. I'm telling you, one bat short. Yes, they are. And that's why GD Martinez is so needed. Guys, we will be back again tomorrow. Pre-game coverage probably coming at 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern if it's a 7 o'clock game against the Braves. I don't know actually what the Brave time is tomorrow, so let me double check. It is going to be 7.20. So, yeah. Be on the lookout for a pregame show a couple hours prior to that, more than likely. And same applies for the entire series. Also be on the lookout again. We may have a watch party happening this week. So we'll soon find out on that front. And we will. We're, we are planning to take live callers this week too, hopefully in this Braves series. So just be on the lookout for, you, for it all. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the latest postgame breakdown here on Warning NYM. And I'll talk to you all again real soon.